Hello everyone. Welcome to day 11 of 21 days of machine learning with code warriors. Now, in the previous session, we did a regression mini project where we also linked our model with a flaw using Flask with a web app and now after completing all this about regression, we are going to conduct our sessions on classification. Now, in this session we are going to learn about logistic regression. The first thing is why logistic regression? I mean Every time, I mean in the regression, we learn about various algorithms and things and every time the data that we use, the dependent variable always be a numerical so that we will predict a continuous value from it. But what if our dependent variable or I mean our target variable Y will be categorical? What we are going to do then? We are, won't be able to use our regression algorithm there. For example, let's say if you want to predict uh, on the basis of input features of a mail whether the mail is spam or not or whether on the basis of input features of uh, about a tumor whether it's malignant or not and like that. And consider if you try to solve a, I mean a classification problem using regression model you will face various problems such as first you need to set up a threshold value for your outcome let's say if the value outcome will be between 0 and 1 and you set a threshold to 0.5 you need to treat that every value less than 0.5 will be as 0 and more than 0.5 will be as 1 but not always the regression model is going to learn accurate relation between data there might be chances that uh, the value you the model predict with around like 0.4 and threshold is 0.5 and it is classified as not spam but actually the email is as a spam right that might cause a serious problem and there might be also possibility that your output of the model will be less than 0 and more than 1 that cause regression always give us a continuous value as a prediction so in order to overcome that we need uh, uh, another algorithm which will predict the value by making a prediction as probability for a class for let's say as it's going to return output as a probability then the output will always be between 0 and 1 for the binary but for if there are multiple classes probability will always be between 0 and 1 of each class and like that so that was why we need a classification algorithm and that's why we are going to learn about logistic regression first cause it's one of the basic and easiest classification algorithm. So first thing is what is logistic regression and why it's a classification algorithm. I mean people often get confused that its name is logistic regression then why it's a classification algorithm. Now the main thing is it is inspired and derived from linear regression. Right? Our, you know the, our equation was y is equal to mx plus c for a basic linear regression. It is actually derived or I mean inspired from a linear regression and it also borrowed the concept of limit and probability from the field of statistics. Right? And that's how it makes a model for classification problem. In order to understand that we are going to get to know about how it actually works. Right? So first let's say as you can see in this image it's going to fit the model or I mean it's going to fit the data using linear regression. As you can see in this image our independent variable is x and our dependent variable is y. And let's say this example is for spam or not spam. 0 represent it's not spam and 1 represent the email spam. So for 0 it's going to plot the points on the line of 0 and for 1 it's going to plot the data points at y, line y is equal to 1. Right? And if you try to plot a linear regression model on it, you can see that the model will fit like this. In this image, this middle line, that this middle slant line make more sense uh, compared to this because if you treat it as a probability, it's going more than 1 and less than 0. That's not possible. So what we can do is we can apply a function after the linear regression which will first limit the value between 0 and 1. Alright? And after that, it will tr also try to fit this as a probability not as a linear regression model between them and how we are going to conduct it is by using functions now here this problem is referred as binary class classification problem because there are only two class but for multi-class classification problem there will be multiple classes and the output variable right so let's try to understand that how logistic regression is going to work for this example so how it works as you see the equation y is equal to mx plus c is for this linear regression fitting the data as you can see in this image. 
but after that we need to apply a function on equation y which will convert it into probability and limit the value between 0 and 1 and the function that we are going to use here is sigmoid. What sigmoid does is it is used for converting the probability for binary class classification. Alright and here the our example is binary class classification so we are going to use sigmoid here. So what sigmoid function does is that it first convert the outcome of linear regression model into probability and limit the value between 0 and 1 and that's what we wanted for our classification problem right. So the equation with that we are going to use is we are going to apply for probability we are going to apply sigmoid function on our equation y. So the equation will be sigmoid of y will be 1 upon 1 plus e of the power minus y. And this equation is going to limit the value between 0 and 1 and convert them into probability. Alright. And that's how logistic regression works. I mean it converts a linear regression model into a probabilistic model that is our logistic regression model. But for a multi-class classification problem, the logistic regression is also, I mean, coded like that, that it tries to understand if the problem is binary class classification problem or multi-class. If it is binary cl class classification problem, it uses sigmoid, but for multi-class classification problem, it uses softmax. Softmax is a function similar to sigmoid, but it's for multiple classes. What softmax does is that the linear regression model will return an output for all each classes and softmax is going to convert them first into probability and then it's going to convert the class with the maximum probability as an output. Let's say suppose there are three classes let's say a b c and the uh, if uh, and it have an output of like let's say 0 0.1.2 5.7 3.4 and then it's going to convert them into probability and after converting them into probability the class with the maximum probability will be treated as an output let's say in this example let the class b gets a maximum probability of around like 58 percent so the output will be class b and that's how a softmax function works now the third concept that we are going to learn is about advantages and disadvantages now the main advantage of logistic is it's so simple and it's so easy to implement. I mean just by using, converting a linear regression model into probability we can implement it and that's why we can think that it doesn't require much high computation power compared to other algorithms right. And second is that it proves very efficient if the data are linearly separable. You can think that in regression problem you can tell whether it's linearly separable or not. But uh, how we are going to understand whether the class is linearly separable or not in classification problems, right? There are data points are classified into two different categories. So if you try to plot the data points, I mean of different classes using two independent variables like this in this image as you can see in this example, we use two independent variables x1 and x2 and we try to plot a graph of those data points. And to show the class, we use the notation of data points as different for class in one class we use green points and for second class we use red cross and like that. And if it's possible to split them, I mean split these two classes with a line, you can say that it's kind of linearly separable data points. But if the data points are like as you can see here in this image, I mean red red data points are surrounding the green data points. So these data points are non-linearly separable data points. Alright, and the, that's the main disadvantage of logistic regression is that it can't fit on non-linear problems like this as shown in this image, right? I mean, but nowadays in the advancement of our machine learning, there are a lot of hypotheses and functions which can be used with logistic regression so that it will be able to fit on non-linear data set. But without those hypotheses, logistic regression algorithm can't solve non-linear problems like this. Right, and the second main disadvantage is that if the data point exceeds then an expected range or kind of become an outlier a little far away compared to the other data points, then this algorithm might give inaccurate results because it's sensitive to outliers. I mean, previously, like polynomial regression, logistic regression, it's also sensitive to outlier data points. I mean, let's mean let me try to give you an understanding by the image as you can see the data points are collectively like here and these data points are like collectively like here and this logistic model fits like this but if we get a data point like here I mean 
it will be an outlier and far more expected compared to this that means this data point might be erroneous or a noisy data and it's so sensitive that after getting this data point in a data set or fitting using this data point it will change its curvy nature and it will uh, give an inaccurate result to lot of data points and that's why it's one of the main disadvantage of logistic regression so that's it all about uh, logistic regression now in order to implement it in a code first we need to import it so we are going to use from sklearn.linear model we are going to import logistic regression out of it after that we need to create an object of it so we are going to create an object named classifier classifier is equal to logistic regression in parenthesis and after that we are going to use classifier.fit in which we need to pass our training set that is x train and y train and for making prediction, we need to use classifier.predict in which we need to pass independent variable of testing set and it will return predictions and which will be stored in y underscore pred. Now by default, logistic regression used a hyperparameter referred as multi-class and solvers as auto so that it will check the data and set the function by itself to check whether it's a binary class classification problem or multiple multiple class classification problem so that it will be able to change functions to sigmoid or softmax or others there are also other functions which are advanced than that but you can also tune up the hyperparameter to something else as per our requirement there are very less chances that auto will choose a wrong function for our problem but you can check out documentation of scikit-learn in order to understand it quite more now that's it for our today's session hope you like it enjoy keep learning